So for today's moneymaker, we have kind of an interesting one. We will be making weapon poison plus plus. Now, in order to do this, we will need to obtain a very secret ingredient known as cave nightshade. And before we can do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the gear setup. So as for the gear setup, I'm just taking my graceful since we are going to be doing a bit of running. But the most important item is a light source of some kind. So either bring a lantern, uh, your Kandarin headgear, a torch, whatever you like using for light sources. And as for teleports, we will be using a ring of dueling to teleport to Castle Wars. So from Castle Wars, you can just make your way east. And the area that we are going to is right here known as Gutenoth. And before we can enter the cave to get the cave nightshade, we will need to get a scavid map. So those are really the two items that you need is a light source and the scavid map. Um, we don't currently have it because I think we threw it away after the quest, but let me show you how to get another one if you don't have it. After you make your way through this city gate, just follow the path. We'll need to traverse the bridge. Well, I guess bridges, there's multiple. And there's Keef. I believe we can obtain the map from one of these city guards located next to Keef. I've lost the map you gave me. And there we go. Now we have another map. And like I said before, that's pretty much all you need for this moneymaker. Graceful is optional, but you do need the scavid map and a light source to navigate the caves. Now we can go back to the beginning. We passed this part earlier whenever we teleported from Castle Wars. You can enter the cave from here. And as you can see, there's a spawn for Cave Nightshade right here. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So as for the method, it's very simple. All we're doing is collecting the cave nightshade and then hopping to another world. You could do this on one world and just wait for it to respawn, but it takes almost a minute for that to happen. So you'll get far less cave nightshade if you choose to do it that way. Something that I actually found kind of funny was that the OSRS wiki method guide for this said that you can hop multiple worlds in order to get more, but that you're going to get kicked out after a while. Um, that hasn't been a thing in quite some time it's been a few years since they fixed that yeah back in the day if you hopped too many worlds it would log you out and you'd be on like a cooldown timer before you could log back in but thankfully that's not a thing anymore now as you may have already noticed i'm using a different teleport than the ring of dueling just because i want to see how many cave nightshade we can get if we go like max efficiency so i am using my max cape to teleport to yanil since it is closer than the castle wars teleport but don't worry if you don't have, you know, a teleport to your nail, you can just use the Ring of Dueling and that's close as well. It's also next to a bank, so you can just use it multiple times. Uh, the only thing is, is that you have to bring either stamina potions or restore your energy at a house pool. You'll also notice that I have my inventory on my actual game screen. And the reason I do that is because I'm on the world hopper the entire time, so I won't really be able to see what I have in my inventory unless I switch back and forth. That is the Inventory Viewer plugin in Runelight, and it's pretty helpful for moneymakers like this. And just in case you're curious, uh, if you try entering this area, the cave, without a map, it actually won't let you go inside. It'll just put you right back at the entrance and it'll say that you can't navigate the caves without the map. I didn't check to see what happens if you try going in there without a light source. I'm assuming it's the same thing, or maybe it lets you go in there and it's just really dark and you start taking damage, kind of like how you do in other caves, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm surprised it took me this long to actually do this moneymaker, because I've definitely seen it in the past before, but maybe it just wasn't as profitable as it is today. I think the wiki said you can make around 900k an hour, and that's if you only get like 150 per hour, which I would imagine we're going to get a lot more with how fast we've been collecting them so far. This is a pretty unique moneymaker though, because we're collecting an untradeable item that we are going to use in Herblore to make into a tradable item that we can sell for profit. So pretty interesting that we can't just sell this item outright to the GE. Because of this, the OSRS wiki says that it has a theoretical value of 6,324 GP. So pretty decent. 
Now, as I said earlier in my video, it's not as simple as just collecting the Cave Nightshade. You do need a level 82 herb lore requirement, as well as completion of the Watchtower quest, so keep that in mind. If you don't have that herb lore requirement, then you can't actually make money from this, so yeah, just remember that. Also, this isn't the only way to get Cave Nightshade. You can also use the farming skill to farm your own Nightshade, and you actually get it in a stackable variant. I don't really have any experience with this because I don't believe I've ever farmed Nightshade. Maybe once for like a diary or something, but yeah, never really had the need to uh, farm this stuff. Now throughout the making of this video, there were a few worlds that had Cave Nightshade missing, so I'm assuming, you know, someone came and just grabbed one for whatever they needed it for. But then towards the end of the video, there were a few worlds that were back to back that were missing the Cave Nightshade altogether, so I'm assuming someone else was doing this moneymaker, but besides that, it was fairly uncontested. Also something that I feel that I should mention is that the scavid that is walking around in this area can kind of troll you a little bit. Sometimes you'll hop to a world and he'll be standing right on top of it and instead of left clicking to pick up the nightshade you'll left click on him and yeah it's a whole thing so that can be kind of annoying. It wasn't a huge deal but if it does get on your nerves you could probably just use the entity hider plugin in runelight to hide him and you should be good to go. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this moneymaker. Fairly simple and straightforward. Let's go ahead and take a look at how much Cave Nightshade we were able to obtain in one hour. So after one hour, we were able to collect 390. That's a pretty big amount considering that uh, it wasn't, you know, perfect by any means. There were a few worlds that we hopped to that were missing them. So I guess someone else was doing it as well. But uh, yeah, that's a good amount. All right, so here we go. We have the supplies. Let's go ahead and make it. I guess I'll go ahead and uh, track the amount of time it takes to make it as well. That way we can see how much total time it took us to do this moneymaker. We have the coconut milk, cave nightshade, and the poison ivy berries. So let's get to making it. Alrighty, there we go. Took a bit longer than I thought it would. Uh, 390 didn't really seem like a lot of uh, weapon poisons to make, but it took about 19 minutes to make them, so I guess we will add that to the total time uh, to get an accurate GP per hour. But um, yeah, here they are. And as you saw earlier, a little price check on it 2.5 mil in weapon poison. So let's go ahead and throw them in the GE and sell them off. So unfortunately, like an hour ago when I was doing a price check on these items and I was checking the margins uh, they were selling for minimum 6700 and they've already gone down so you know that's just my luck but uh, I guess let's see how much they sell for I'm checking GE tracker and it says that the offer price is around 6371 so I'll just drop it one more GP and sell it off and there we go they just instantly sold so 2.4 mil almost 2.5 mil so still not bad so if we take into account the cost of supplies, which was just the coconut milk and the poison ivy berries, that is 58,483 GP. Subtract that from the money we made, which was 2,460,120 GP. That gives us a grand total profit of 2,401,637 GP. And since it took us around 19 minutes to make the potions itself, the hourly rate for this moneymaker is actually 1,824,028 GP. So still not bad. Especially when you consider that we also got about 74,000 herb lore XP. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video and thank you to all of my channel members. Once again, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you.